Hey guys. Yeah, so I was watching um, this this clip of uh, from the bully goat, um, the Baphomet hermaphrodite blood money hitman that um, infused himself into the Summer Wells case after knowing the father of Summer Wells, Summer Moon, Utah Wells, uh, Don Wells, for over, I think, 16 years, I think, I believe that was how they, because they knew each other in prison. Um, sometimes people in prison plot and scheme things about how they're going to make money when they get out of prison, especially if they tend to be drug addicts, like meth heads and things like that. Both of these gentlemen are meth addicts, historically. Uh, the uh, bully goat, the bully goat, BK the bully goat, he is um, a known meth head. He said that he's had an admitted history of really hardcore streamlining. Um, I don't know a lot about meth. I've never taken it myself. I've never been around anybody who's done it. Um, I I think it's a white powder, I guess. Uh, I don't really know. There's a pink, there's a new pink one I heard about um, on the news in Hollywood, which I thought looked really pretty friggin' disgusting. But um, I, I thank God, you know, the worst I did was cigarettes and that those were hard enough to get off of. That was very difficult. I mean, it was the hardest thing. Uh, getting over um, cigarettes, getting off of cigarettes and getting over my, my uh, second husband was, were those were the two emotionally really tough. Um, but um, meth is a whole different thing. Ernie Shell does not do meth. Ernie Shell does not do drugs. This has been confirmed by Jimbo, who's known him for 20 years, and by Lisa, who lived with him every single day for a month. And, um, you know, Lisa did what I would want to do, is just take, take, him, take him home, take care of him for a while, keep him going, you know? Um, and she really seemed to have paid a, a big price, which is what I thought I was going to pay if I took him home, and uh, helped him out, which I was... Would, my first instinct was definitely was, you know, um, well, my really first instinct was the past life that we had. And then once I got past that one, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. You know, the guy needs help. Of course, I want to save somebody. I love saving people. That's why I'm a, I'm a mother. I'm a human woman. That's what we do. Save, protect, heal, nourish, grow, you know, be a mom. I'm, I'm a mom. I'm a, I'm a mom, but I'm also, you know. Uh, a goddess and also an empress so anyways different things galactic traveler star being etc so anyway the bully goat the bully goat you know we all know him right the one associated with the summer wells case he got involved with that case uh shortly after i think he made this video where he said that the way you make money on youtube is to extort the fuck out of um a child tragedy any child tragedy will do he made like a, a minute and 36 second video about how to make money on YouTube. And uh, he did exactly that. He extorted a, a tragedy and he's made bank. He and his mom, his mother. And then we learn more about this character. We find out he's a CI, which is a confidential informant, which is a snitch. And uh, a form of an actor too, because it's like an, it's like an agent, a 007 agent. They go in there and pretend to make friends with you and then they snitch on you or something. And he went in there and, and made friends with the family or he was already friends with Don. And, uh, and then there's Candace, the mother of Summer Moon, Utah Wells, the little five-year-old child that got gone from the hills of Tennessee and uh, their home. 110 Ben Hill Road, which is where the little child was supposedly last seen, way on the top of this hill. Um, after a, a rough day in a hot car and a cold pond and God knows what. She was apparently sold, I believe, but I wasn't there, so I don't know. It's all alleged. I believe she was sold to a trafficking ring who then expected her to operate as a well-trained sex sex slave child to be sold many, many times over, and a lot of money come from that. But I believe, and I wasn't there, so I don't really know because I wasn't there, but after all the evidence and studying the case and the cast of characters for the last, yeah, 
I would say that I would I believe um, that the psychic Donna Reverend Donna um, whatever her last name is I'm blanking now but you know Reverend Donna something that she's probably the closest to what happened and she talked about a snuff film and I believe that the YouTubers uh, they like to blame everything on YouTubers as if YouTubers are a, a group that is specific. It's like everyone is different, okay? We're just people. It's like the YouTube world is like having a house. It's not, you're not, it's like, it's just a vehicle to hold your material. That is all YouTube is. It doesn't have a personality of its own. We are not YouTubers like a special group. In fact, most of us don't even like each other. Some of us don't like each other, not everybody. Some of us like each other. There's a lot of fighting going on, just like in any normal thing. It doesn't matter with if the vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's on the playground, if it's in the schoolyard, if it's um, in the fucking sand, you know, um, what do you call those things? You know, the where you play with the sand, 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 God, I'm just blanking. My body, my mind just isn't working right now. Um, hopefully I'm changing timelines. Sandbox, what the hell, really? Sandbox, you know? It doesn't matter if it's the YouTube streets. It doesn't matter if it's a fucking court of law. People are going to fight. The In a court of law, expensive people are, gonna, are going to fight expensively. Oh my God. This whole thing is insane. You know, I really, I really worry about people. Um, Jimbo, I felt ignored. As, as, as nice as it was that he went to pick up Ernie, um, for him to ignore that Ernie had sat in a chair like that and make a joke out of it, I don't know. There's something, there was, I was wondering if Ernie thought that maybe Jimbo secretly, subconsciously, somehow surreptitiously wanted Ernie to be locked up in that place. That maybe, I don't know, I don't know this for a fact, that maybe Jimbo express, exposed that he actually deep down thinks Ernie's really fucked up and needs to be, needs all this mental help. Who the fuck are you people who think you know about mental help? Just shut up. Shut up, people who think you know about mental health. You're, you're the mental patient, okay? You are, if you think that every guy who jaywalks has to be stuck in a rubber chair for two hours with his clothes ripped off. Is that what you thought? Who are you people, really? I don't mean to put you all in the same category because that's not fair, because not everybody thinks like that. If I was driving Ernie Shell away from a place like that and Ernie said, I feel like I look like I just left a metal home. It's like you did leave a metal home. And uh, why, where are your clothes? What did they do to you in there? And I would be very upset. And Jimbo's just laughing it off. And Betty laughed it off too. I don't get you. I don't get that. Um, I really don't like that Betty accuses other women of lusting after Ernie. I think maybe she's the one who's now all of a sudden she broke up with her boyfriend and she's laughing like it about it like it's really funny. She's hitting on Ernie. I think she's the one who's in love with Ernie, accusing all these other women of being in love with Ernie. You know, and I mean, you know, if you if you love Ernie, you're, you love Ernie. You're gonna be in love with Ernie or love Ernie or whatever. It's okay. It's okay. You know, um, I think that Lisa really took a lot of abuse. If I were hanging around with Ernie, I would take just as much or, or more. I would be attacked to the fucking max. Um, I mean, I'm, I can handle myself, you know, but it takes its toll. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever I'm abused, basically, I just get stronger from it. And for me, it's always going to be, um, you know, something that... Um, I, I end up gaining in the end because it's like when people, it's like when my nephews used to beat up on my first husband. Um, they used to, they used to jump all over him and beat him up and, and, and like, I don't know, like, cause their dad was better and they had to beat up Mike, you know, and, um, or something like that. And Mike was a big, strong strap and Irish dude with a lot of muscle and, um, heavy muscle and tough, tough guy, you know, I mean, you could really be, be on him and he, he's going to take it. He says, those, those, strong, those are strong people. 
that 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 clan, that Irish clan, big strong strapping people, beautiful people, big strong, thick, you know, muscular, big bones, beautiful, blue green eyes, um, hazel eyes. I think the mom had brown eyes and the dad had big bluish hazel eyes and. I think one of the sisters has green eyes. One of them has brown eyes. Two of them have brown eyes. I'm pretty sure the older sister has green eyes or blue eyes. And um, depending on what timeline you're on, of course. But anyway, I just wondered if, if Ernie... Oh my God. I feel like everybody wanted him. Everybody must have thought something different. I, I knew exactly from everything he said in that video that he was headed to, to, to a bad place and he did not get treated well. He was abused. There was no chair. There was no bed for him. He had to be sat in a chair. They abused him. They abused him. And then he, he was weird when he got out. He was all like oddly giggly or sort of, I don't know. And I think it's very odd. See, I didn't, I'm not, I haven't heard the whole story yet. I'm still listening. Um, Betty gets, cause Jimbo was talking about it and I guess Betty was sick too, and um, I hadn't seen her in the chat, so I was kind of wondering. I I don't like women who think they have to chase other women away, or I don't, or accuse everybody of being jealous. And it's like you know what? Not everybody's like that. I mean, who are these women who think that they can just show up? And because they have a big, bold personality, they need to take over. Now they're going to take over. It's like, you know what I mean? Um, and then these fake friends who pretend to be nice but are really passive-aggressive. Like, what's her name? You know? Um, and then BDAC was up there on Jimbo's chat. That he let BDAC up there? Um, and, and, and Betty was up there talking. It's really a, it just blows my mind that people can have all these conversations. Let me up on panel. Let me up on panel. I have to be in a very certain mood before I want to go up and be on some panel or, or talk to anybody or, or have my voice be heard. I only, only want my voice heard at certain times when I'm at this, a certain frequency, when I have something to share within that frequency that I use my sound to create. And that is the only time. So I only feel that way sometimes, not all the time. And so that's why I don't make, you know, I don't live stream for hours and hours and hours. I don't know how these people maintain it. I, I have to do it while I feel like it. Then I, if I get tired or take a, I need to stop and think or do something else. I don't want every second. I don't know how these people sit there for hours and hours and hours. I mean, I, I get it, sort of, but I need to move around. I, I have to move around. I'm always moving around. Um, oh, boy. God, I don't know. I have, to, I have to find, I have to keep moving around. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing that's nice about this apartment is that there's, I can, it's got rooms. And I'm used to having at least two to three rooms to move around in. Some of the places are one room, you know, that you, and then you don't get to, uh, you know, move around as much. And I, I'm, I'm fidgety. I, I sort of have to move around to keep my blood flow going, to keep things f moving so I don't get stuck and stiff and stagnant, you know. Um, I don't need a huge place. I really don't. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with a, with a cute apartment. I mean, I'm a single person. I don't need, you know, um, all these rooms and stuff, but I do have a house that has a lot of rooms. And if I did need a house with a lot of rooms, there it is. You know, um, I'm a little, I, I am kind of an odd duck. I vibrate at a different frequency. I think that's why I feel like I understand, um, Ernie as best I can as being a female from a different bloodline and born in, in a slightly different generation. Um, you know, how well can you understand somebody? Well, you understand them if you understand them. You know, people are like, I don't understand you, Ernie. I find him so easy to understand. I mean, he hasn't said a single thing that I haven't understood. It's like, what? You know, and then these women were talking about Ernie and doing the whole butt rubbing thing. And uh, that, you know, there was this one tarot card reader 
that actually brought up, um, I didn't say mental illness, but like something like that. And almost like, almost like a slight, uh, not an autism or like retardation type of thing, but almost like a oddity there, like an odd thing there. And I do think there is, he has got a funny kind of odd sensibility when it comes to f women, I think. Um, because you don't normally say stuff like that uh, as if he's living in some other other world or something almost, you know? It's like, um, I sort of almost want to take him and say, look, let me, let me, let me give you some pointers on how to get nor how to do normal. I don't know. <laughs> Cause I mean, obviously he's very cute. He can get a woman, but uh, what is he looking for? I don't know. It's just like, it's not like it's hard for him to get women, I think, but what kind of women? I don't know. I'm just sort of like, like, sweetheart, you don't say certain things in modern society, probably just to get the best results, you know? And, uh, so it's like, is he a little off at times? Sure. It doesn't mean he's a criminal. He's not going to hurt anyone, you know? And then he said he was afraid of animals and that he was afraid of women. And he said he's afraid of animals because they bite you. Now, I thought that was odd for him to say that because he's Mr. Tracker, Mr. Animal Whisperer. He's made of tiger, lions, and bears. You know, he's got tiger blood. He's got, you know, werewolf blood. He's got... uh what was the other wolf or what, or, uh, what was the other one? Sna a snake or something. So, um, is he, is he changed? I don't know. They do things to you in these hospitals. I'm very, um, I very, I'm very suspicious of these hospitals. Um, I know too much. I know who's behind all these hospitals and these, these, um, experimental, um, programs. The Tavistock Institute was one of the first w one known, known institute to st like study psychology or whatever. It's a well-known institute. It's, it's held in high regard. It's, it's one of these Nazi experimentation program places. My granddaddy worked for the damn place for a year. And um, I think that he probably did some weird shit. Supposedly, he, supposedly, he, he was, he, something to do with soldiers and how much they could tolerate at war. See, that's a very sick thing. I think all of that is torture. Um, boy, oh boy. So I just wondered if Ernie um, thought that Jimbo secretly wanted him walked away. And then I don't know, because I don't know if Ernie was like, said goodbye. It sounded like he didn't say goodbye. It sounds like he just up and leaves. And he doesn't know how to say goodbye. And he doesn't like to say goodbye. Maybe he just gets freaked out and just like runs, you know? People do that. I know people like that. They just run. And um, they bolt when it get when the going gets tough or when, in a certain way. Not, he's not afraid of tough, but it's emotionally tough. I don't know. I think he didn't say goodbye to... Um, I'm not sure if he said goodbye properly to Predator Hunter Nation when he left. I, what, I don't, <laughs> excuse me, I don't know. I wasn't there. Tina could confirm whatever happened if she, you know. So, so he's a little odd, okay? You know, I come from odd people. So I'm not, that doesn't freak me out like it might freak out other people. My dad was odd. He was completely unusual. Nobody was like him. What? Why wasn't he thrown in jail? Well, he was a hard-ass worker and he was a boat builder and he was tough as nails and he was very smart, and he was a leader in the community, and he, and he ran a fucking huge boat yard, or three, and he, um, he wasn't thrown in jail. He never drank, he never drank and drive. Did he speed? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Did he drive, did he break the driving rules 
by like, oh, I got to turn around and just haul ass over a, the, 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 mid, the meridian, the, mid, the midline thing, the thing. He would drive over the grass in the middle of a highway. Um, he would just do some dangerous shit like that. He would just, he would do very dangerous moves in a car. He was absolutely insane. He was in fucking sane. But he got away. He was nobody ever threw, threw him in a mental institution. No. He was a badass motherfucker. People were afraid of him. He was authoritative. He had a deep fucking voice. He had the biggest voice you ever heard. Um, my brother is the only one who has almost as, almost as big a huge voice. Scary motherfucker. Doesn't even realize it. Gets away with everything because every because everyone's terrified of him. He's, huge. He's tall and huge and scary. And I, But I'm fighting back. I'm fighting that motherfucker if he tries to fuck with me again. You take one more thing from me. I will fight back. I'm going to be small. I'm going to look silly doing it, but I'm going to fight back. I'm fighting you back. I'm not letting you do this to me again. No. Sorry. And I, it takes a lot for me. Ooh. Because I was crushed. And I will. I still get. I still fall to pieces. It's so unfair what he did. He's supposed to take care of the women and children in his life. And instead, he chooses the most mentally ill to support and destroys everyone else. That's not cool, to put it mildly. So anyway, you know, all these people who wanted, who were like, oh, Ernie's got these problems and call these cops and everyone's saying go into, I just really couldn't believe that no one else knew what his fate was going to be in that place, except for me. It's like, really, guys? Now people know, and, and the ones who need to defend that place, I don't see how you can defend that. To, to act like, to go, they have to go into denial about it, I guess, you know. Um, I've seen people completely lie to cover up their actions. And then they're, they're very convincing. Um, oh, the, the, the way, the, the, the lies that are told about me that the, in this weird way, um, I just, it's like, wow. You know, that's why you people that do hear me correctly and aren't idiots and aren't there to just drive me crazy. The ones that are actually hear what I say and don't take what I say and act like they didn't hear what I said and just completely say some, throw some other bullshit at me. I mean, that kind of mentality where you're a paid troll and you have to think of something to do to be mean to another human, that's, a, that's an interesting, weird concept and it's very scary, actually. Um, you know what else really scared the living fuck out of me? I'm gonna tell you. One of the reasons I was terrified to get anywhere near Ernie was I thought his brother was out. And then, thank God, that he's not. But when I found out that general awareness rap and, and the bully goat who thinks that he's not a suspect, he thinks he's a YouTuber and not a suspect because he's done such a good job till now. Amazing how he's been able to cover it up with people that aren't functioning properly, which is a lot of people. A lot of people. Anyway. Yeah, so. The lying, the cover-ups, the bullshit. This BDAC guy, he's obsessed with Ernie. Yeah, these people who are paid to harass and do it for fun and like to see you suffer and think it's funny to watch you suffer, those evil people, those are the ones that are selling children and getting young girls hooked on meth and, and sexually abusing them and just doing, wreaking havoc and acting like a victim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you're not a victim. Now, the bully goat gets away with not being a suspect. Why? Why? I'd like to ask you people. He was there that week, but nobody talks about it. Why? He mentioned in his one of his videos 
that he was, he bragged and laughed and said, I'm a very bad man. And he had just done something. Now I get the feeling from ES and from his in interactions with Candace Wells that BK had everything to do with the disappearance of Summer Moon Utah Wells. Allegedly, right? Did I say your name? BK the Bully Goat, is that his name? How do you think he is not involved? What is the part of his involvement that makes you think he's not involved with the disappearance of this little girl? Hmm? I'd like to know what you think. Why is he not involved? Should you come up on panel? You have to be really in a ballsy place to take on these people. You have to be feeling very strong. Yeah, no, I think that um, Ernie is a really unusual person. You know, 20 years ago, you know, I would have, I would have, I would have probably done, been dying to give him a kid 20 years ago. I had to, I had to be like, oh yeah, you're, 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 you're too old for that. I forgot. Oops. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so funny. It's funny when you're young and old at the same time and you can imagine both things, you know, I feel like I've really, I've waited a long time to get to this age. It's been a long haul. You have to go through a lot of stuff to get to this age and stay alive. And um, it's it's hard and I'm, I'm like, oh my God. I remember being a little kid and thinking, oh, I cannot wait until I'm older. I cannot wait until I'm in my 50s and this has all gone by. I, for some reason, I knew it was gonna be tough and it was tough and I, and I tried to make it the best I could. I, tried, I did the best I could, but I had a lot of pain. I had a lot of body damage from poisons and toxins and vaxes and things that really did a number on me that I had to struggle with my whole life. And I tend to hide my pain instead of broadcast it and play this big victim role like some of these people do. Wow. So I do find it really interesting though that I, I, even though there is so much bullying and so much cruelty, um, and just idiocy and, and lies and false representation and all this bullying on YouTube. There's a lot of loving, good people on YouTube as well. I've seen some good things. I've seen some people come together and heal and make friends again. And, and so it's, a, it's, it's the YouTube streets are the, what we make of it. They're just us, you know, I'll be back. Love ya.